All right, guys, this video is going to be a little discussion on how to make the most money on value stocks. Now, a lot of people are not interested in value investing because it sounds boring, doesn't sound very exciting, but I will have you know that you can make value investing very exciting. Warren Buffett, his best period in the early days, he was making 50% annual returns so the most conservative boring strategies could make you huge returns so let's get that out of the way I have a little icon of a weighing scale and a rocket because yes value investing is getting is about getting a lot of bang for your buck but this video is, is going to be about supercharging value investing using options and trying to be smart about it so let's dig in First, I'm going to give some context of the setup I'm looking for. I'm looking for stocks that are beaten up, that have earnings power, or are beaten up relative to the assets and the balance sheet. And I'm just going to go through maybe a few examples so you get an idea of what it looks like when it happens and then what happens after, hopefully. So a good example is ExxonMobil during the pandemic. It got crushed, super beat up. This yellow line is tangible bulk value. The earnings power was very good. Price to cash flow, price to sales, they were all cheap. Lots of reason to get in this stock. The stock was, let's say, 30 bucks, just under 30 bucks. Ended up going super high, one, let's say 118. You could have used options, you could have used stocks, uh, could have used a combination. The point is value investing would have helped you identify that this was a great opportunity. Later we're going to talk about the strategy that would have made you the most money and still protected you if you were dead wrong. Meta is another great example. Meta was beaten up when they changed the when Apple changed the rules on the on the privacy settings the stock went down 74 percent that would have been a great time to put on this type of structure that I'm going to talk about where you you find a value stock you believe that hey in the future it might come back you don't know when but you think it's a good value opportunity and then it exploded not only did it go back to the highs but it went higher than that let's go to the next one Nvidia you could have argued was a value stock at the very least it was definitely oversold when it was down here in these low prices because it was high to low down 68 percent on the valuation side you could have argued that 40 EBITDA or enterprise value to EBITDA was interesting. You could have said 38 price to cash flow. You could have said maybe, hey, price to sales near 10. That's a fair price, and we'll see what happens. There's a lot of, if you liked NVIDIA and you follow NVIDIA and you started to hear about AI, that would have made sense. It went up big soon after. So you gotta have a, a place where you're, you find value and then place place your bet place your place your trade take your position and then see what happens so down over 70 percent and then i think it's like over 20x from there what is that let's look at it a thousand percent that's 10x yeah okay so 10x next one palantir palantir very interesting case because it didn't make sense to buy it in the 40s it came out at 10 didn't make sense it was over what was it 55 times sales definitely didn't make sense but it ended up going 10 times sales and price to cash flow you know 70 times cash flow but it had a lot of cash and the stock from six dollars ended up going to 31 value opportunity if you factor in the growth but let's go to the next one 
There's a couple times Tesla did it, but from the major, major highs for 10, there was that 2022 drop over 70% when it was $100 a share. But that, you could argue, was a value opportunity because the price to cash flow was reasonable for a high growth company. And it ended up doing well once it was done being oversold and uh, more than a double right there. So what do you do in, in these windows when the stocks are definitely beat up? I have Bollinger Bands. They're definitely outside the Bollinger Bands. What kind of trades can you do? And that's what the rest of the rest of the video is going to be about. For example, I have this Chinese streaming media company, IQ, that I am looking to put one of these trades on. Used to be eight dollars, down seventy-two percent on a price to sales basis, very cheap, price to cash flow very cheap. The earnings power on this one is why I'm interested over time. It is trading at a 11% earnings yield right now. And for next year, expected to have a 20% earnings yield. If the stock just retraces the recent sell-off, maybe it could, it could do, what, 50% of that, which would put it around four. It's around $2 a share right now. So I want to share my logic and how I want to put on the trades. There's two things I want to take care of. If, if it's massively successful, I want to benefit. And if I'm dead wrong, in this case, the stock goes lower, I still want to have a chance to recover. If I just buy out of the money calls, I will be wiped out if I'm wrong. I don't want that. If I buy deep in the money calls or buy stock, I will have a chance to endure and and own the shares even if it goes lower and it'll, it'll give me more uh, staying power let's say but I lose all of the leverage buying out of the money calls will do so I'm proposing that a barbell approach will be better so the concept I'm gonna apply for this strategy or this scenario is expected value and expected probability. Expected value is the arithmetic mean of the possible values a random variable can take weighted by the probability of those outcomes. The example here is heads or tails. We know it can be only two outcomes, head or tails. And 50-50 probability, you win or lose a dollar let's say heads you win a dollar tails you lose a dollar so you multiply 50 times a dollar gives you positive 0.50 tails it's a you lose a dollar times 50 and so it's a negative 50 cents combined let me just add Combined, you you make nothing. Expected value is plus fifty cents of of the heads, minus fifty cents of the tails. You, you there's no edge, so you're going to end up flat. So we're going to apply this thinking for the for the options. So here's how I look at it. I don't. I'm bullish on this stock, so I would probably have a higher belief. There's, I would have a belief that there's a higher chance that the stock goes up, but trying to be somewhat neutral, let's say there's a 50-50 range, 50% 50 chance it goes up and it goes up in a big way, 50% chance it goes sideways to down. Now, you can play with their, your percentages however you feel is appropriate. This is what I'm going to use for this video. The way I want to structure the options is I want to make as much money as possible if the stock goes up but I still want to survive if the outcome is less than bullish if we just go sideways or down I still want to have a way to make money if I'm just early or just wrong I want to 
end up with stock. I want to end up with stock because I, I still want to be able to double my money over time, even if it takes longer. But if it just takes off over the next six months, hopefully six months to a year, I want I want to capture that massive upside. So that this is why I'm calling it a barbell strategy, where I'm using something conservative sprinkled in with something aggressive. What I came up with for this scenario was a mix of IQ stock because I want to have some position of equity. And then I did a combination of an in the money Jan call. It's a little less than six months. And that that is somewhat of a stock replacement call option. It doesn't have a lot of meat on it right now, but it's a little bit of, of a more conservative strike. And then I have a little more of a, a gambly, far away junkie stock or junkie call option. This is 50% out of the money. I don't want to go any more further out than 50% out of the money. I would actually even prefer to be lower than that. 30 to 50% is what, what I would use for the junkie. And what I when I do the back testing, best case scenario, let's say the stock doubles, this uh, in the money call option might quadruple, and the fifty percent out of the money calls might it might five to ten x. So, and uh, you don't need a lot of the junky far out of the out of the money call options. But you just need some, and uh, those will be wiped out. Bear in mind they will be wiped out if the stock goes down and I will only be left with the hopefully the in the money call options which I can exercise and then the stock so there you go that's my strategy to try to capture what potentially could be a massive move because it's so oversold the stock is down way over 50 percent and it has the potential to be a good quality company China is going through a very tough time and I will make a follow-up video. If you want to see that follow-up video, be sure to like and follow so you can be notified when I make part two of this video.